Uh, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, I've been a while since I've made a video and uh, I've been kind of busy. Uh, you can see from all this stuff in front of me. Uh, what I've been up to is uh, re-establishing uh, Palladium printing. Uh, I tried r really hard to uh, be able to print in Palladium when I was in Brussels, but in a little flat in central Brussels it's uh, really hard. And I wasn't really very happy with the uh, results. So I haven't printed for really a long time. Uh, so in the last couple of weeks I've been uh, calibrating and getting my process sorted out. And I've finally managed to... Let me just move that out of the way. I've finally managed to um, get to the point of making my uh, first uh, print for here for some years. Uh, I printed here several years ago. Uh, and I'm pretty excited by it. So I thought I would just talk you through the uh, overview of the process. This is not a, by any means an in-depth uh, process. Uh, I've used probably every, uh, every conceivable method of uh, digital negative uh, making. I've uh, used QTR, which is uh, mind-bendingly complicated in some respects. I've used precision digital negatives, which uh, I don't like at all. Um, uh, and I've uh, recently I came across this guy's book, Easy Digital Negatives by Peter Marha. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly, but you can see that's how it's spelled. So that's what I'm going with. This is uh, this is actually pretty good, and the guy uh, here has a nice um, method. Most people um, with their digital negative uh, processes rely upon. Um, setting a curve um, in Photoshop and then you apply the curve to your image. Uh, this guy does that but he does it in a different way. What he does is uh, tone maps using a, a gradient map and it's a really clever idea uh, and it's one that I've used here works really well very easy. Problem with curves uh, as he points out and I can tell you is true uh, is that as you uh, adjust one point, all the other points uh, are just um, uh, in, uh, in unison. Uh, it's kind of like a lever effect, a seesaw sort of effect. Uh, and so you can make constant iterations with this. This tone mapping using the gradient map tool is really, really straightforward. Um, so I'm glad I came across that. Uh, I'll try to remember to put uh, the link to this book in the uh, in the video. So let me talk just talk through a little bit. My process is very slightly different to uh, Peter's because uh, I'm not sure what he does about uh, finding the uh, base printing time. He does have a method in there if you don't if you don't have uh, a step wedge. But I uh, I, I have a, a couple of these calibrated Stufa step wedges uh, which I've had for some years now uh, and this is this is uh, kind of all they are uh, so I use that um, cover half of it up with a little strip of the material that you're going to uh, print on uh, okay so that gives you the uh, the base point and what you're looking for on a stufa is that when you print it here is uh, here are several prints that I made uh, but when you print it you have, I think you'll be able to see the line down here, where uh, on this side is the uh, is the material that I'm going to print on, and you're looking for steps one and two to just kind of coalesce together, so you can't uh, see the difference. Then you've got your uh, maximum black printing time. And for me, on my plate burner, that was a staggering 15 minutes. Now that's uh, that's changed. Uh, that used to be about 11 minutes uh, with previous uh, chemistry uh, that was a long time ago so 15 minutes is what I got so 15 minutes is what I'm going to use and I consider that to be step one I think uh, you, you have to have your base printing time before anything else can work then there are several ways to go about the next stage you don't need to be as complex as this but uh, this is uh, what I did this is a, this is a uh, color matrix uh, in the HSB uh, format 
uh, provided by this guy on his website so I've taken advantage of that and what you're doing here is you're looking for the maximum UV blocking color t-shirt seems to be falling apart uh, when you print that this is what you get uh, and you can see that uh, you know some of these uh, colors let me just uh, try and hold both of those up together there we go okay so some of these uh, down here they're very light you wouldn't really expect to get much blocking there but up along here right along here you can see that there's significant difference between how well the various colors block the UV and really uh, it wants to be in here so that was my next stage was to find the uh, maximum blocking color and for me that was uh, here 50 and 85. Now you don't need to do that by eye, uh, by, by eye. What you can do is scan this and use the threshold adjustment on the scanned image in Photoshop uh, to see which is the lightest uh, box here. Uh, that worked that worked really uh, easily. So I've got my maximum uh, colour. Here it is. I'll just hold that behind so you can see. Okay, there's the maximum blocking color that uh, that I got and that's uh, in the HSB model that's um, something like uh, 50 degrees uh, I want to say 80 but it might be 40 uh, yes 40 I think uh, um, brightness and 100% saturation uh, so there it is uh, that's the maximum uh, block for me and that was that was my first matrix. I didn't use this smaller one in the end. Printed it just in case. And uh, that's the matrix that I got out of it. It's not completely cleared. Uh, I was a bit lazy on the clearing with this one. Um, but you can see that uh, there's a significant issue. You're you're getting to maximum black down here somewhere, and it's not it's not very black either. Um, but that's the first printing. Uh, then you use that to uh, to get your calibration map for the for the tone for the tone mapping, and when you apply uh, that when you apply that uh, gradient map uh, to the same matrix, uh, there they both are. Uh, you get this instead, uh, and I think you can see uh, there's massively more ink laid down throughout here than there is uh, on this initial one all right and you end up with this matrix now that is really good first off you notice that uh, it's way blacker it's much much um, better black than you get in here uh, there is a tone um, I, th I can see Mm, I can see tone way down here in the FDFC uh, range and it increases and I can see variations in tone all the way up to well certainly uh, 0F and possibly actually a little ways along here so it's separating the tones really well and I could go back and tinker with that but in final prints, any further tinkering there will be uh, imperceptible. So, uh, you know, I'm really happy with that. That's uh, that's given me a great tonal separation, and that was way easier to achieve than it ever was with PDN or QTR. Uh, I, I would have uh, when I was using those systems. I would literally have dozens of these. Um, drive you bonkers. Uh, one more thing to point out is I had to get uh, some of these little uh, QP uh, cards. These are just um, neutral uh, neutral cards. Okay, and I think these would be pretty useful. But I got these for the scanning to uh, set the black and white points and the uh, uh, mid-tone, the colour, uh, the white balance uh, correctly from the scan. So those were pretty useful, pretty easy to use. So that's it. That That's all it took. Uh, it was about uh, three days of work uh, involved in getting to that stage. 
uh, a really great system I highly recommend it it's way better it's way easier to use than PDN or QTR uh, and as I say for me that worked really well let me show you the first uh, print that I've made it's over here so I took this shot uh, it's just a grab shot uh, of a friend's little girl and this is going to be a gift for, for, for them uh, but that's uh, a really beautiful print uh, this, the tones are separated nicely there's a little bit of um, blowing out around her face because the light was just a grab shot the light wasn't uh, brilliant um, but I really like it it's a great yeah, it's a great looking print and as I say uh, that's all come about uh, pretty easily so uh, if you're interested in more detail then I can go through the detail of each of these steps in subsequent videos if uh, if that's of any interest but uh, my strongest recommendation is get that book it's uh, it's cheap it's easy to follow it's um, pr all pretty straightforward uh, and not terribly expensive so give it a go uh, it's not uh, it's not it's not just for palladium printing you can uh, use this process for I want to say any printing process quite honestly uh, literally any um, uh, he talks about salt prints and cyanotypes um, but uh, really uh, any printing process that you want to try it doesn't have to be the ruinously expensive palladium uh, give it a go so I hope that's been of some interest uh, if you want to see more if you want more detail if you want me to do videos about each of these steps uh, drop me a line and let me know um, thanks for watching bye for now